Section 4 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 1, Part 2 of Roasting, Boiling, etc. From To Roast Mutton, Venison Fashion. Take a hind quarter of fat mutton and cut the leg like a haunch. Lay it in a pan with the back side of it down. Pour a bottle of red wine over it and let it lie twenty four hours. Then spit it and baste it with the same liquor and butter all the time it is roasting at a good quick fire. Two hours will do it. Have a little good gravy in a cup and sweet sauce in another. A good fat neck of mutton eats finely done thus. To keep venison or hares sweet, or to make them fresh when they stink. If your venison be very sweet, only dry it with a cloth and hang it where the air comes. If you would keep it any time, dry it very well with clean cloths, rub it all over with ground pepper, and hang it in an airy place, and it will keep a great while. If it stinks or is musty, take some lukewarm water and wash it clean. Then take fresh milk and water lukewarm and wash it again. Then dry it in clean cloths very well, and rub it all over with ground pepper, and hang it in an airy place. When you roast it, you need only wipe it with a clean cloth, and paper it as before mentioned. Never do anything else to venison, for all other things spoil your venison and take away the fine flavour. And this preserves it better than anything you can do. A hare you may manage just the same way. To roast a tongue and udder. Parboil them first for two hours, then roast it, stick eight or ten cloves about it, baste it with butter, and have some gravy and galantine sauce, made thus. Take a few bread crumbs and boil in a little water. Beat it up, then put in a gill of red wine, some sugar to sweeten it. Put it in a basin or boat. To roast rabbits. Baste them with good butter and drudge them with a little flour. Half an hour will do them at a very quick, clear fire. And, if they are very small, twenty minutes will do them. Take the liver with a little bunch of parsley and boil them and then chop them very fine together. Melt some good butter and put half the liver and parsley into the butter. Pour it into the dish and garnish the dish with the other half. Let your rabbits be done of a fine light brown. Or put the sauce in a boat. To roast a rabbit, hare fashion. Lard a rabbit with bacon. Roast it as you do a hare, with a stuffing in the belly, and it eats very well. But then you must make gravy sauce. But if you do not lard it, white sauce. Made thus. Take a little veal broth, boil it up with a little flour and butter to thicken it. Then add a gill of cream. Keep it stirring one way till it is smooth, then put it in a boat or in the dish. Turkeys, pheasants, etc. may be larded. You may lard a turkey or pheasant or anything, just as you like it. To roast a fowl, pheasant fashion. If you should have but one pheasant and want two in a dish, take a large full-grown fowl Keep the head on, and truss it just as you do a pheasant. Lard it with bacon, but do not lard the pheasant, and nobody will know it. Rules to be observed in roasting. In the first place, take great care the spit be very clean, and be sure to clean it with nothing but sand and water. Wash it clean, and wipe it with a dry cloth for oil, brick dust, and such things will spoil your meat. Beef To roast a piece of beef about ten pounds will take an hour and a half at a good fire. Twenty pounds weight will take three hours if it be a thick piece. But if it be a thin piece of twenty pounds weight, 
two hours and a half will do it, and so on according to the weight of your meat, more or less. Observe, in frosty weather, your beef will take half an hour longer. Mutton A leg of mutton of six pounds will take an hour at a quick fire. If frosty weather, an hour and a quarter. Nine pounds, an hour and a half. A leg of twelve pounds will take two hours. If frosty, two hours and a half. A large saddle of mutton will take three hours, because of papering it. A small saddle will take an hour and a half, and so on, according to the size. A breast will take half an hour at a quick fire. A neck, if large, an hour. If very small, little better than half an hour. A shoulder, much about the same time as a leg. A chine of twelve pounds, an hour and a half, and so on. Pork Pork must be well done. To every pound allow a quarter of an hour. For example, a joint of twelve pounds weight, three hours, and so on. If it be a thin piece of that weight, two hours will roast it. Directions concerning beef, mutton, and pork. These three you may baste with fine, nice dripping. Be sure your fire be very good and brisk, but do not lay your meat too near the fire for fear of burning or scorching. Veal. Veal takes much the same time roasting as pork, but be sure to paper the fat of a loin or fillet and baste your veal with good butter. House lamb. If a large forequarter, an hour and a half. If a small one, an hour. The outside must be papered, basted with good butter, and you must have a very quick fire. If a leg, about three quarters of an hour. A neck, a breast, or shoulder, three quarters of an hour. If very small, half an hour will do. A pig. If just killed, an hour. If killed the day before, an hour and a quarter. If a very large one, an hour and a half. But the best way to judge is when the eyes drop out and the skin is grown very hard. Then you must rub it with a coarse cloth with a good piece of butter rolled in it till the crackling is crisp and of a fine light brown. A hare. You must have a quick fire. If it be a small hare, put three pints of milk and half a pound of fresh butter in the dripping pan, which must be very clean and nice. If a large one, two quarts of milk and half a pound of fresh butter. You must baste your hare well with this all the time it is roasting, and when the hare has soaked up all the butter and milk, it will be enough. Put your gravy and hot currant jelly in boats. A turkey. A middling turkey will take an hour, a very large one, an hour and a quarter, a small one, three quarters of an hour. You must paper the breast till it is near done enough, then take the paper off and froth it up. Your fire must be very good. A goose. Observe the same rules. Fowls. A large fowl, three quarters of an hour, a middling one, half an hour, very small chickens, twenty minutes. Your fire must be very quick and clear when you lay them down. Tame ducks. Observe the same rules. Wild ducks, twenty minutes. If you love them well done, twenty-five minutes. Teal, widgeon, etc. Widgeon, a quarter of an hour. Teal, eleven or twelve minutes. Woodcocks, twenty-five minutes. Partridges and snipes, twenty minutes. Pigeons and larks, twenty minutes. Directions concerning poultry. If your fire is not very quick and clear when you lay your poultry down to roast, it will not eat near so sweet or look so beautiful to the eye. To keep meat hot. The best way to keep meat hot, if it be done before your company is ready, is to set the dish over a pan of boiling water, 
cover the dish with a deep cover so as not to touch the meat, and throw a cloth over all. Thus you may keep your meat hot a long time, and it is better than over-roasting and spoiling the meat. The steam of the water keeps the meat hot, and does not draw the gravy out, or draw it up, whereas if you set a dish of meat any time over a chafing dish of coals, it will dry up all the gravy and spoil the meat. To dress greens, roots, etc. Always be very careful that your greens be nicely picked and washed. You should lay them in a clean pan for fear of sand or dust, which is apt to hang round wooden vessels. Boil all your greens in a copper saucepan by themselves, with a great quantity of water. Boil no meat with them, for that discolours them. Use no iron pans, etc., for they are not proper, but let them be copper, brass, or silver. To dress spinach. Pick it very clean, and wash it in five or six waters. Put it in a saucepan that will just hold it, throw a little salt over it, and cover the pan close. Do not put any water in, but shake the pan often. You must put your saucepan on a clear, quick fire. As soon as you find the greens are shrunk and fallen to the bottom, and that the liquor which comes out of them boils up, they are enough. Throw them into a clean sieve to drain, and squeeze it well between two plates, and cut it in any form you like. Lay it in a plate or small dish, and never put any butter on it, but put it in a cup. To dress cabbages, etc. Cabbage and all sorts of young sprouts must be boiled in a great deal of water. When the stalks are tender, or fall to the bottom, they are enough. Then take them off before they lose their colour. Always throw salt in your water before you put your greens in. Young sprouts you send to table just as they are, but cabbage is best chopped and put into a saucepan with a good piece of butter, stirring it for about five or six minutes till the butter is all melted, and then send it to table. To dress carrots. Let them be scraped very clean, and when they are enough, rub them in a clean cloth, then slice them into a plate, and pour some melted butter over them. If they are young spring carrots, half an hour will boil them, if large, an hour, but old sandwich carrots will take two hours. To dress turnips. They eat best boiled in the pot, and when enough, take them out and put them in a pan, and mash them with butter, a little cream, and a little salt, and send them to table. Pare your turnips and cut them into dice, as big as the top of one's finger. Put them into a clean saucepan, and just cover them with water. When enough, throw them into a sieve to drain, and put them into a saucepan with a good piece of butter and a little cream. Stir them over the fire for five or six minutes, and send them to table. To dress parsnips. They should be boiled in a great deal of water, and when you find they are soft, which you will know by running a fork into them, take them up and carefully scrape all the dirt off them, and then with a knife scrape them all fine, throwing away all the sticky parts, and send them up plain in a dish with melted butter. To dress broccoli. Strip all the little branches off, till you come to the top one. Then, with a knife, peel off all the hard outside skin, which is on the stalks and little branches, and throw them into water. Have a stew pan of water with some salt in it. When it boils, put in the broccoli, and when the stalks are tender, it is enough. Then send it to table with a piece of toasted bread, soaked in the water the broccoli is boiled in under it the same way as asparagus, with butter in a cup. The French eat oil and vinegar with it. To dress potatoes. You must boil them in as little water as you can, without burning the saucepan. Cover the saucepan close, and when the skin begins to crack, they are enough. 
drain all the water out and let them stand covered for a minute or two then peel them lay them in your plate and pour some melted butter over them the best way to do them is when they are peeled to lay them on a gridiron till they are of a fine brown and send them to table another way is to put them into a saucepan with some good beef dripping cover them close and shake the saucepan often for fear of burning to the bottom when they are of a fine brown and crisp take them up in a plate then put them into another for fear of the fat and put butter in a cup to dress cauliflowers take your flowers cut off all the green part and then cut the flowers into four and lay them into water for an hour then have some milk and water boiling put in the cauliflowers and be sure to skim the saucepan well when the stalks are tender take them carefully up and put them into a cullender to drain then put a spoonful of water into a clean stew pan with a little dust of flour about a quarter of a pound of butter and shake it round till it is all finely melted with a little pepper and salt then take half the cauliflower and cut it as you would for pickling lay it into the stew pan turn it and shake the pan round ten minutes will do it lay the stewed in the middle of your plate and the boiled round it pour the butter you did it in over it and send it to table another way cut the cauliflower stalks off leave a little green on and boil them in spring water and salt about fifteen minutes will do them take them out and drain them send them whole in a dish with some melted butter in a cup to dress french beans first string them then cut them in two and afterwards across but if you would do them nice cut the bean into four and then across which is eight pieces lay them into water and salt and when your pan boils put in some salt and the beans when they are tender they are enough they will be soon done take care they do not lose their fine green lay them in a plate and have butter in a cup to dress artichokes wring off the stalks and put them into cold water and wash them well then put them in when the water boils with the tops downwards that all the dust and sand may boil out an hour and a half will do them to dress asparagus scrape all the stalks very carefully till they look white then cut all the stalks even alike throw them into water and have ready a stew pan boiling put in some salt and tie the asparagus in little bundles let the water keep boiling and when they are a little tender take them up if you boil them too much you lose both colour and taste cut the round of a small loaf about half an inch thick toast it brown on both sides dip it in the asparagus liquor and lay it in your dish pour a little butter over the toast then lay your asparagus on the toast all round the dish with the white tops outward do not pour butter over the asparagus for that makes them greasy to the fingers but have your butter in a basin and send it to table directions concerning garden things most people spoil garden things by overboiling them all things that are green should have a little crispness for if they are overboiled they neither have any sweetness or beauty to dress beans and bacon when you dress beans and bacon boil the bacon by itself and the beans by themselves for the bacon will spoil the colour of the beans always throw some salt into the water and some parsley nicely picked when the beans are enough which you will know by their being tender throw them into a cullender to drain take up the bacon and skin it throw some raspings of bread over the top and if you have an iron make it red hot and hold over it to brown the top of the bacon if you have not one hold it to the fire to brown put the bacon in the middle of the dish and the beans all round 
close up to the bacon and send them to table with parsley and butter in a basin to make gravy for a turkey or any sort of fowls take a pound of the lean part of the beef hack it with a knife flour it well have ready a stew pan with a piece of fresh butter when the butter is melted put in the beef fry it till it is brown and then pour in a little boiling water shake it round and then fill up with a tea kettle of boiling water stir it all together and put in two or three blades of mace four or five cloves some whole pepper an onion a bundle of sweet herbs a little crust of bread baked brown and a little piece of carrot cover it close and let it stew till it is as good as you would have it this will make a pint of rich gravy to make veal mutton or beef gravy take a rasher or two of bacon or ham lay it at the bottom of your stew pan put your meat cut in thin slices over it then cut some onions turnips carrots and celery a little thyme and put over the meat with a little allspice put a little water at the bottom then set it on the fire which must be a gentle one and draw it till it is brown at the bottom which you may know by the pans hissing then pour boiling water over it and stew it gently for one hour and a half if a small quantity less time will do it season it with salt brown colouring for made dishes take four ounces of sugar beat fine put it into an iron frying pan or earthen pipkin set it over a clear fire and when the sugar is melted it will be frothy put it higher from the fire until it is a fine brown keep it stirring all the time fill the pan up with red wine take care it don't boil over add a little salt and lemon put a little cloves and mace a shallot or two boil it gently for ten minutes pour it in a basin till it is cold then bottle it for use to make gravy if you live in the country where you cannot always have gravy meat when your meat comes from the butchers take a piece of beef a piece of veal and a piece of mutton cut them into as small pieces as you can and take a large deep saucepan with a cover lay your beef at the bottom then your mutton then a very little piece of bacon a slice or two of carrot some mace cloves whole pepper black and white a large onion cut in slices a bundle of sweet herbs and then lay in your veal cover it close over a slow fire for six or seven minutes shaking the saucepan now and then then shake some flour in and have ready some boiling water pour it in till you cover the meat and something more cover it close and let it stew till it is quite rich and good then season it to your taste with salt and strain it off this will do for most things to bake a leg of beef do it just in the same manner as before directed in the making gravy for soups etc and when it is baked strain it through a coarse sieve pick out all the sinews and fat put them into a saucepan with a few spoonfuls of the gravy a little red wine a little piece of butter rolled in flour and some mustard shake your saucepan often and when the sauce is hot and thick dish it up and send it to table it is a pretty dish to bake an ox's head do just in the same manner as the leg of beef is directed to be done in making the gravy for soups etc and it does full as well for the same uses if it should be too strong for anything you want it for it is only putting some hot water to it cold water will spoil it to boil pickled pork be sure you put it in when the water boils if a middling piece an hour will boil it if a very large piece an hour and a half or two hours if you boil pickled pork too long it will go to a jelly you will know when it is done by trying it with a fork 
End of section four.